um, a kind of much stronger version of the tree property holds that's fairly tightly analogous to super compactness for omega two. Um, on the other hand, uh, it already implies that several of these nearby cardinals do not have certain generic largeness properties. So omega two is not generically huge in the same sense that omega one was, meaning it doesn't have a saturated ideal. This is a con uh, proved by Foreman and Magador. Um, and then uh, it, it also implies that omega-3, the next cardinal above, is not even generically weakly compact if we take that to mean just has the tree property. Um, and this is because MM implies 2 to the omega-1 equals omega-2, which implies there's a special Ehrenstein tree of height omega-3. Can everyone hear me? I just want to check that this is all working. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. So uh, the, the question in light of these uh, examples is, can omega-2 have generic hugeness and compactness properties at the same time? So more specifically, can there exist, can we have a model where there's a saturated ideal in omega-2 and omega-2 has the tree property? Um, a related question, which we uh, will address, is uh, from Foreman and Magdor from the same paper mentioned on the first slide, um, which is, uh, they ask, can there exist a saturated normal ideal in omega-2 that contains the approachability ideal? Um, I won't define this, but just note that um, uh, it's, it's related to this weak square principle. So, we, we will answer both questions uh, in the negative, assuming that the continuum is at most omega-2. So we don't have a full answer. Um, and the theorem is that if kappa is a regular cardinal and two to the less than kappa is at most kappa plus, then, and, and there's a weakly presaturated ideal on kappa plus concentrating on cofinality kappa, then weak square kappa holds. So this implies, weak square kappa implies that the approachability ideal on, on kappa plus is the full power set of kappa plus. So it, it implies that there's a negative answer to Foreman Magador's question that you can't have a non-trivial normal ideal containing the approachability ideal under these assumptions because uh, under these assumptions, the approachability ideal is uh, trivial or maximal. So it's not sort of a, uh, what we look at, what we're looking for. Um, right. So I want to prove this. Um, so let's introduce some definitions. Um, very well known, mostly. Uh, so a, a normal ideal on a regular cardinal is called precipitous. If whenever you force with the Boolean algebra power set of kappa mod this ideal. And, um, and you take a generic ultra filter, then you can form the ultra power of the ground model. And precipitousness means that this is a well-founded model. Um, we say an ideal is saturated on kappa if it has this Boolean algebra has the kappa plus chain condition. Um, Pre-saturated is a weakening, um, saying that if you have less than kappa many maximal antichains, and you have um, an arbitrary positive set S, then you can find an I-positive subset of S, S prime, such that it meets each antichain at, uh, and in most kappa many uh, places. So saturation, because it says each antichain has size at most kappa, is a trivial strengthening of that. Um, we say an ideal is strong if it's precipitous and it's forced that that the generic embedding sends kappa to the kappa plus of the ground model. Uh, weakly presaturated, this is uh, less well known, but it's uh, defined in Wooden's big book. Um, this is just you take strong and re remove precipitous precipitousness. So. We say it's it's at least well founded up to the ordinal kappa plus plus one, and 
Kappa is sent to that ordinal, but we don't assume it's fully well founded. Um, okay, so it's well known that uh, two through five are either well known or trivially seem to be uh, successively weaker properties. And um, pre saturated is kind of a key property because it implies that the ultra power is closed under kappa sequences from VG. So, and I should say, yeah, weakly pre-saturated is strictly weaker than strong. So this extra assumption of um, full well-foundedness actually is a, a stronger assumption. Okay, uh, now for uh, basic definitions about trees and the weak square principle. So for an infinite cardinal kappa, a kappa tree is a, a tree, so it's a partially ordered set uh, that has no, um, once you split, you never rejoin. Um, and it has height kappa and uh, the below, so another way of saying this not rejoining thing is below any element, it's linear or it's well, uh, well order. And um, the, the levels uh, have size less than kappa, so each uh, node of rank less than kappa has, um, there are only ca less than kappa many of them. We say the kappa has a tree property if every kappa tree has a cofinal branch. We say a kappa plus tree is special if there's a specializing function. So there's a function from the tree to the predecessor cardinal such that uh, comparable nodes get sent to different ordinals. Um, and special trees clearly cannot be uh, have cofinal branches because this that would be a branch of length kappa plus. Uh, that applying the function to it would give you an injection into kappa. So that contradicts the kappa plus the cardinal. Um, Jensen showed that the existence of a special kappa plus tree is equivalent to the weak square principle um, square sub kappa star, or weak square kappa, which states that there's this sequence, C alpha, alpha less than kappa plus, where each C alpha is a non-empty set of size and most kappa. Each member of the set is a club in alpha, um, and each of them has order type at most kappa. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a, co uh, and you have this second property um, that is the co coherence property. So if, if D is in C alpha and beta is a limit point of D, then D intersect beta is in C beta. So it's a kind of fat ladder system, you could say. All right. So the key is that this we like we're we were first interested in the property, but weak square allows for very concrete witness to failure of the tree property to be constructed. Okay, so some other uh, definitions we'll need for for this talk. Uh, the first one is a slight modification of something that's quite well known in the forcing uh, theory community. So the approximation property. So uh, a sort of more fine grained way of getting at it is the following. Suppose A is a set uh, and you say, sure. and X is a Wait, can, yes. I, can I ask you something? Uh, sure. what's, what's, the, um, uh, what's the relationship between weak, weak square and diamond? Is it, is it like, is, is they're, they're very, independent from each other, I think. I mean. Okay. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, well, no, I take it back because actually, so diamond implies some GCH and actually you can deduce weak square from GCH. So there, there is a connection there. Okay. But the, the stronger square is independent. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so let's say you have a subset X of A and a family of uh, contained in the power set of A. We say that this X is approximated by the family F when for all little a and F, X, a, a intersect X is in F. It's also in the family. So the idea is like F contains a lot of small sets and you want to say that Every uh, 
small set that's in the family, you intersect that with X that's also in the family. And you can formulate the Kappa approximation property uh, using this uh, notion by saying, if you have two models of set theory M contained in N and M cardinal Kappa, we say that MN has the Kappa approximation property when for all ordinals Lambda in M, if uh, X in the larger model subset of Lambda is approximated by P Kappa Lambda of the smaller model, then X is actually in the smaller model. So approximated sets are, are only, only ground model sets are approximated. That's the idea. Um, okay, an unrelated definition, but we'll, we will be using, this should be well known to everybody. Um, uh, pretty well ordering, so coming from descriptive set theory, but applicable generally. Um, so it's just a linear, it's a almost, almost well ordered. So it's a transitive reflexive binary relation in which every two elements are comparable, but it's not uh, anti-symmetric. So um, but we, we assume that when you take the equivalence relation that putting X equivalent to Y when they're both less than each other, you get a well order. So everyone knows that, but uh, I just want to introduce the notation, which is uh, once you have a pre-well ordering, then it gives you, it codes a, a surjection from the set onto some ordinal. And um, so you, you take the, the uh, well order uh, by the equivalence class, and then that's, um, then you just map uh, an element to its rank under that well order. So I'm going to denote if you have a set X that codes a pre well ordering. So, okay, so say you have a set of ordinals Z that's closed under the pairing function. You can take a subset of it. Whoops, what did I do? You can take a subset of it that will code a set of pairs. And so we'll code a, a relation. And if it codes a pre well ordering, then uh, you let f sub x denote the corresponding surjection onto the length of that well order. Okay, so let's get into the theorem. So here's a restatement of it. So if you have a weakly pre-saturated ideal and you have enough GCH but not too much, so uh, then um, then you have weak square. So for clarity, we're going to assume kappa equals omega one. So this is saying that is, there's a weakly presaturated ideal on omega two, concentrating on ordinals of uncountable cofinality, and the continuum is at most omega two, then you have weak square. Okay, so to set up, if you have this, so as we mentioned on earlier slides, um, if you force with the uh, power set of omega two modulo the ideal, you get an elementary embedding from V to some generic ultra power M. The critical point is omega two and M by assumption is well founded up to omega three, up to and including omega three and omega two is sent to omega three of V. And when we assume it concentrates on ordinals of cofinality omega one, this implies that the um, the, the ordinal omega two of V is has cofinality omega one according to M. So this is a consequence of Wash's theorem and normality, um, meaning that the identity function in the ultra power represents the ordinal omega two V. Okay, so what we're going to do is build more explicitly a square weak square sequence in M. So recall the end, it should be, I should have written the index for clarity. The index is omega one. Omega one is below the critical point. So the embedding will reflect this to V. So weak square sub omega one will already hold in V. Okay. So how, let's, let's get started. So we have to build some objects to get started. Now, since we assume that the continuum is most at most omega two, um, the set of countable subsets of omega two also has size omega two, and this is the the set of all those things from V is a is an element of M. 
And the reason is you can just list them uh, and then in, in a sequence of length omega-2, apply J to that and then cut it at the ordinal omega-2 of V. That will be the original sequence. So that's an element of M. And we're going to define in M so it's something that approximates, uh, well, yeah, to use a word in different senses, uh, it approximates the, the ground model power set of omega-2. M doesn't really have a direct way of referring to it, but it has the collection of countable subsets of omega-2 from V. And we're going to say script A is the subsets of this ordinal that are approximated by P omega-1, omega-2 of V. So this includes all of the ground model sets, which can be found in M by taking, if you have an X, you just take J of X and intersect it with omega-2, that's the original set X. But it could include more, we don't know in general. Okay, now we know that omega-2 of V has, has changed, it's no longer a cardinal, it was the critical point of an embedding, and it's a successor cardinal, so that means it has uh, cardinality, the uh, omega-1 now in M. And we assumed that its, co its cofinality was changed to omega-1. So let's fix a club C star witnessing this and enumerate it. C, C, uh, alpha, alpha less than omega-1. Okay, so this is going to be an important object. And then in V, let's also fix a sequence of bijections, witnessing that the ordinals below omega-2 have cardinality omega-1, um, or surjections, I guess. Uh, that's all we need. And note that, that for the same reason that all subsets of omega-2 of V is a member of M, also this sequence of surjections is in M because you can apply J to it, cut it, and then you get the original thing. So using this, using these two things, we can write omega-2 of V as a continuous increasing sequence, the union of a conti continuous increase, increasing sequence of countable sets. So you have an omega-1 sequence, Z alpha, and you can define it like so, like I've written. So Z alpha is the union of the surjections applied at alpha that are indexed by something uh, less than um, C alpha from this club. So you have only countable many things, and you're applying the image on a countable ordinal in taking the union. Okay, so now that we have these things, take a countable, uh, not a countable, a, an elementary submodel of the H omega 2 of M, which is the, this omega 2 is the omega 3 of V. And let's take the, these objects inside. Uh, C star, this set of countable subsets of omega 2, and the sequence of surjections, and make sure it has um, all the ordinals below omega 1 there and take the model only of size omega-1. And let Q be the collection of countable subsets of omega-2V that live in this model. Okay. So the main claim in the argument is the following. Um, suppose you have two sets that are approximated and they both code free well orderings of omega-2 of the same length. In the set of all images of sets from Q uh, under F sub X is the same as the set of all images under F sub Y. So this is mapping a collection of countable sets, subsets of omega-2 onto some, some ordinal. They're both mapping onto the same ordinal, and this is saying that it's the same collection. Now, why should this be true morally? Like, if, if these were both from the ground model and I replace Q with the ground model P omega 1, omega 2, then of course this would be true. This would just be all the countable subsets of, of this uh, length with whatever ordinal they subject onto that come from the ground model. So, but we don't know that these functions are actually from the ground model, but we get the analogous equation. Okay, so let's look at the proof of this. 
So take some member of Q. So remember, this is a countable set that lives in this elementary submodel. So we need to show that there's some other S such that Fx applied to R equals Fy applied to S. Okay, so the first thing we do is find a club in omega one such that for all alpha in C, Fx applied to Z alpha equals Fy of Z alpha. Remember, Z alpha, this is a continuous increasing of length omega one that uh, covers omega two of V. Okay, so you have these two surjections onto an ordinal, and you can just kind of catch your tail so that club often um, there the same input gets you the same image output. And since it's a club, we can assume that each of these Z alphas is closed under the good old pairing function. Okay, so remember these these Z alphas are unbounded, and so they cover um, omega two of V, and so there since since that has also uncountable cofinality, um, some Z alpha is going to cover the set R that we started with. Now remember Z alpha it was um, a union of uh, images like this, uh, but indexed below C alpha. But we still get that Z alpha is a subset of some ordinal C alpha less than omega two of V. And Z alpha is still a countable set um, according to M. Now it's not necessarily uh, in V because we only looked at points in a, in a club to Z alpha and this club was outside of V possibly. But we can cover Z alpha by some set Z from V by just taking the single function sigma xi sub alpha and then applying that to some countable ordinal beta that's large enough to cover z alpha. Okay. The point of doing that is that since we assume the sets x and y coding these surjections are approximated, this means that when by definition, x intersect z, y intersect z are both in the ground model. That's what it means to be approximated by p omega one, omega two of v. So those sets live in our elementary submodel and also z alpha does. So we can then just take the intersections with z alpha, the subset of z, that's in the elementary submodel. And these code pre-order, pre-orderings of z alpha of a certain order type. Okay, so what's going on here is there, so it's closed under the pairing function. The information in Z alpha just tells you uh, in the, the ordinals that are contained in Z alpha, um, what order are they put in by this X intersect Z alpha? So this X intersect Z alpha codes some relation. It codes a pretty pre well ordering. And it just tells you the order in which things are arranged. Now, yeah, it corresponds to exactly the order they will appear in the final surjection, but we don't know what their values are going to be. We just know how they're ordered. But since f, f sub x and f sub y have the same image on z alpha, we know that that, that ordinal, that order type is going to be the same. So it's some countable ordinal eta. Okay, so these X intersect Z alpha, Y intersect Z alpha, they code projections from Z alpha to this ordinal eta. Two of them, H, X, H, Y. And um, what we can do is the following. Uh, take, let R prime be the image of R under H, X. So it's some subset of this ordinal eta. And note that if pi is the unique map that puts eta in the, in the place it's eventually going to be in this rejection fx, then um, pi image r prime is just fx image r, right? So hx is putting r in the order it's supposed to be in, but just not in the right ordinals. But we just use pi to stretch it out to the right ordinals. 
Okay, then all we have to do, we can work within the elementary submodel now. Um, so we don't have to work with the full objects fx, fy, we just work with the little things hx, hy. So these are, these are small things and let s be the inverse image of r prime under hy. So we can, we can construct this inside the elementary submodel. That's a member of n. And of course, the forward image of s is r prime. And pi composed with hy of s, image s, is equal to fy image x, s, which is fx image r. So, okay, so this, this, is, this is the proof of the claim. So, right, just to summarize, um, we were able to see some piece of these surjections large enough to work in the elementary submodel um, with and um, produce the sets that, that witness uh, what we wanted so that we found a set in the elementary submodel that gets sent, its image is the same as the original one. Okay, now this means that, so, right, the point of this is that we want a sort of analog to the countable subsets of arbitrary ordinals of size omega two from V, but that's kind of too much for M to really know about. But this is saying that in a sense, we have a canonical uh, version of that by picking any, any code of a pre-will ordering that's approximated. And no matter what we pick, it's gonna get us the same um, output. Okay, so another uh, ingredient in this proof is range restriction. So there might be a notation out there already for this, but this is the notation that I wrote down in the paper. So if, if you have a function f from, from a set z to an ordinal and you have alpha and you have a smaller ordinal beta, let f down arrow beta be the function that sends, that agrees with f when um, the output Output is less than beta, and otherwise just sends sends the or uh, sends that ordinal to zero, or sends that input to zero, whatever it is. Um, and if R is a pre well ordering on a set of some order type alpha, we and like um, and beta is less than alpha, then we let R down arrow beta code the or denote the canonical alteration of R to represent this. Uh, F sub R down arrow beta. Okay, so there's just a, you could, you do the same uh, things, right? You just make X equivalent to the least element if it's being sent to something above or equal to beta and otherwise leave the ordering the same. So this is all very constructible. Um, and then we have a claim that I won't prove because it's uh, not so interesting, but uh, we'll need, we'll need it, which is if, X codes a pre will ordering of type alpha and beta is less than alpha and X is approximated in the same sense as before. Then X down arrow beta is also approximated, meaning again that it's the intersection of X down arrow beta with countable sets in V is also in V, assuming that X had that property. Furthermore, if R is in Q and then F sub X image R intersect beta is equal to the F, the function coded by X down or beta image on some other X, uh, set S from Q. Again, this is all kind of canonical, uh, kind of very construct constructively proven. Okay, so let's get, there's a third claim and then we'll wrap up the argument. Claim three is that M and V agree on which ordinals have countable cofinality below omega three of V. Okay, now this is easily deducible if M, if we actually had a saturated ideal because M would be closed enough to know these things. But since we're only working with small enough ordinals, it's more uh, elementary reasons than that. So the proof is, okay, suppose alpha is an ordinal below omega three V, and V says cofinality of alpha is mu. So it's one of three things, omega, omega one, omega two. Uh, now, 
alpha is an ordinal of, co of size omega two. So this statement is coded by a certain subset of omega two, including right, the statement that it has this cofinality. Now M has this set. So M is gonna say um, the cofinality of this ordinal is at most whatever X codes, right? If M happens to think, well, it actually has cofinality omega, then M has these two cofinal sequences in the same ordinal, one of type mu, one of type omega. So it's gonna make mu have uh, cofinality omega. But we assume th this can't happen unless mu e equals omega, because if mu equals omega one, well, M and, omega and V have the same omega one, so that can't happen. And we assume that omega two gets cardinality omega, or cofinality omega two, uh, one in M. So neither of these happen. So it must have had cofinality omega. Okay, now onto the construction. So first we take care of the ordinals of countable cofinality. And this is, this is where all the machinery is really used. So let, at, at such an ordinal alpha, let C alpha be the set of all countable clubs in alpha. So this can be any order type, but closed unbounded sets that are countable. Um, and only the ones that have the following property. For some approximated set X that is, codes a well order, free well ordering of omega two V of order type alpha, this club is the image under that coded surjection of some S from our from Q, which is this means it's one of these, these countable sets from the elementary submodel. Okay. So we only take that. Now by the main claim, by claim one, the choice of X does not matter. Okay, so we could have picked a different X prime. We would have gotten the same collection of countable clubs. And so if we pick one X, we get uh, uh, only omega one many such countable clubs. And it's the same whatever X we pick. So the cardinality of this set is uh, at most the cardinality of this elementary submodel, omega one. Claim two says that we have a coherent selection. So if, if C is one of these countable clubs in C alpha and beta is a limit point, then C intersect beta is in C beta. If you recall, this procedure says that we can take the image of a thing intersected with a small ordinal that's the image of a canonical restriction of that same thing under another thing from the elementary submodel. Sorry, what was Q again? Q Q is the P omega one omega two of V. Um, sorry, the the collection of countable subsets of this ordinal that are in the elementary submodel. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, claim three tells us that uh, each such C alpha is not empty. Now, yeah, I didn't write the argument here, but it is simply that um, you can take a witness in V. So you can take you can take an X in. So let's say alpha has co uh, cofinality omega, then V thinks that as well, and you can take an X coding that coding a surjection onto alpha. And you can take some, like say, the omega sequence, cofinal and alpha, and the inverse image of that under this X from V is also in V, so that's gonna be one thing in C alpha. So these are all defined. Okay, now we have to deal with the other ordinals, and for this we have two cases. Case one is you look at an alpha, it has cofinality omega one in V. What you do here is take a club from V that has its club in alpha and order type omega one. And uh, this is just the obvious thing to do. You take a surjection from omega two to alpha that lives in the ground model V. If you take an initial segment of this club D of uh, type some limit ordinal, then the inverse image under this function is obviously also in V. 
so it's in particular it's in our elementary submodel and um, if you take this range restriction to its soup then um, the the initial segment of our club is equal to f range restricted to beta uh, applied to r this set uh, from v so in particular s this initial segment is a member of c beta so this is the coherence condition for for weak square okay so we're only picking a single club to be in c alpha for alpha of uncountable cofinality the other case is that alpha has cofinality omega 2 so this is a little more complicated but what we do is Work in V, pick a club of order type omega 2 in alpha, enumerate it as gamma, beta, beta less than omega 2, then take a surjection from omega 2 to this alpha, then take another function g uh, such that it, it outputs the club in increasing order according to ordinals less than omega 2. So f uh, after g of beta is gamma beta. Now, in M, we take a subset of the club determined by our club C star. So this is the, the thing that singularizes omega 2 to now have cofinality omega 1. So D prime is the gamma betas where beta appears in C star. OK, I want to claim that this also has the coherence property. So to see that, we only need to look at Let's take an initial segment of C star R. I see that the gamma betas for beta in that initial segment of C star is out is going to be in um, one of the C uh, deltas for delta less than alpha. Okay, so again, we'll, we'll use this covering property. So, so gamma let's say gamma is the soup of s remember c star is just a subset of omega 2 from v um uh uh right so there's some um beta less than omega 1 so that s is covered by the surjection sigma sub gamma that's from v applied to beta because s is a countable set and uh we have a surjection so now, Z, Z is in V, so we can, and also G is too, so we can consider the function G restricted to Z. This is coded by a countable subset of omega 2 from V. So we can deal with this in the elementary submodel. Now we have S, it may not be in V, but it's a subset of the set Z, so we can compute working in N, uh, G restricted to S. And therefore, we can output the gamma betas for beta and S, the initial segment of D prime, as just F image G image S, right? G image S is a member of the elementary submodel, and F image that is um, exactly this initial segment of D prime. And by definition of the <clears throat> uh, C sub well, what would it be? Um, F, F of gamma, um, that would be uh, a member of curly or script C sub F gamma. So we have the coherence still. Now, okay, so we built, we, I told you how to choose these things. Uh, in two cases, you had to ask V what cofinality this thing had. And um, but M can't do this, so M doesn't have the full power set of omega two from V. But what we what we were able to do is just say in M we know there exists a club for each alpha of uncountable cofinality below omega three V. There exists a club of order type omega one such that all initial segments are in script C beta for some beta less than alpha. So. We, we showed the witnesses by knowing more about where the M came from. But M doesn't have, a, have to have access to the reasons. It just knows that there exists a club with this property, and then it just uses the axiom of choice to pick one 
with that property for each alpha. And that is, that's the construction of the weak square sequence. So yeah, I guess another commentary on this is that we're essentially doing, we're trying to mimic the classical construction of a weak square uh, sub omega one, uh, assuming CH, but we have uh, different assumptions, yeah. Okay. I want to tell this corollary, which is wait, I wait, think, interesting. Wait. Yes, Monroe. I, I I was wondering uh, in the the last slide uh, in your, when you when you build your weak square sequence on on cofinality omega one and omega two, how much mm -hmm. of the, how much of your cardinality assumption are you using? Is it would uh, are you using a lot of your uh, assumption that? Two to the to the less uh, than kappa is equal to is less or equal to kappa plus. The the only place it's used is uh, is in sigma gamma is in the the set of the the this clubs for countable cofinality ordinals. Yeah. Okay. So so yeah. is it, would it be is it correct to say that like once suppose you've built your weak square sequence for uh for uh, guys of cardinality less than less than kappa then building it for for the other guys is is sort of like uh easier or like in general um, yeah so in general i guess you could say that like if, if you look at the so what's what's the what's the proof of weak square omega one assuming ch you just take for each ordinal less than omega two uh, of countable cofinality. You just take the set of all uh, countable clubs, and that has size omega one to the omega. And assuming CH, that's just size omega one. And then at other ordinals, you just take a single club of whatever you want of order type omega one. So their initial segments are countable. So in particular, every initial segment is in one of the the set of all countable clubs that you picked before. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like what we're trying to do is make sure that these selection scripts C alpha are not too large, and mm -hmm. um, the key is the, the cardinal arithmetic assumption for that. All right. So, okay. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. You're Thanks. Welcome. Okay. So here's a corollary. Um, Suppose I is a pre-saturated normal ideal on omega two, and p omega one or omega two mod i is a semi-proper forcing. Then actually C H holds. So this uses this goes through a principle. So it's a very short proof on one slide, but it goes and it's using black boxes that are uh, that are uh, impressive papers, but. Uh, so we use this principle, strong chinks conjecture cofinal, SCC cof, which states the following. So for every large enough theta, every countable elementary submodel M in H theta, and every ordinal alpha less than omega two, there's an end extension N of M. So there's a larger countable elementary submodel that has the same, the same intersection with omega one, but the soup of the new model, the larger model with omega two is at least as high as alpha. Okay, so you can the one uh, think about what we wanna do with this. You can apply it inductively and uh, construct this omega one chain of models where they all have the same countable ordinals. Um, this says you can do that and give, go as high as you want in each step. Okay, now the proof of the corollary is so Hiroshi Sakai proved that if P omega two mod I is a semi-proper forcing, then this principle holds strong Chinks conjecture co-final. Torres, Perez, and Wu um, proved that this principle SEC cof implies that uh, either you have CH or the tree property holds at omega two. So failure of CH is equivalent to the tree property in omega two. Todorovich proved that 
this principle, SEC COF implies the continuum is at most omega-2. So now we're getting to the hypotheses of my theorem with Sean. And Shala proved that a pre-saturated ideal on a successor cardinal concentrates on the ordinals of cofinality of the predecessor. Okay, so how do you put this together? Assume you have a pre-saturated ideal on omega-2. By Shala, it's going to concentrate on cof omega-1. If it's semi-proper, then by Sakai, SCC cofolds, and by Todorcevich, we have continuum at most omega-2. By my theorem, um, that means weak square omega-1 holds, which means there's a Ehrenstein tree of height omega-2. And then, but by Torres, Perez, and Wu, that means the other, the other possibility must hold. So CH must hold. Either there is an Ehrenstein tree or CH. Or, sorry, or, uh, sorry, <laughs> either CH holds or there is an Ehrenstein tree. Uh, <laughs> or there's no air chain tree. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Right, so I should say uh, these papers are non-trivial arguments, uh, especially Torres, Perez, and Wu, um, but we get this nice corollary by combining them. Um, okay. Now, so the question remains, uh, can we drop the assumption that the Continuum is at most omega-2. And I'm just going to state another theorem that's in the preprint showing that uh, this will be difficult to answer. This is kind of a theorem showing limitations of certain methods. Um, okay. So to get pre-saturated ideals on omega-1, we have many methods. Um, but on omega-2, currently, we have to use a class of constructions that use very large cardinals, almost huge cardinals. And um, so this is a kind of abstraction of those constructions, but trying to say as little information about them as possible. So suppose you have some elementary embedding from V to M with critical point kappa. I'm not assuming that it's an almost huge embedding, but it's, it's something that can be defined in V from ultra filters or something. So suppose you have a two-step iteration P star Q with the following properties. Um, the target model is size of P closed, and this, the size of P is less than J of kappa. So typically, this will actually be kappa. Um, the size of P would be kappa. Uh, P star Q collapses the ordinals in the interval between kappa and kappa and J of kappa. So this is what, this is the kind of um, particular thing to construction of saturated ideals uh, that's not in many other forcing constructions. But this is kind of like, in my view, a very minimalistic uh, piece of the hypo those hypotheses. So just, we want to turn J of kappa into kappa plus. Okay, the third assumption is whenever you take a generic for this P star Q, then you can extend the embedding. You can lift the embedding. Uh, J prime from VGH to MG prime H prime in such a way that at least you have the small sequences of ordinals from VGH are absorbed into MG prime. Um, this, if you're familiar with this kind of constructions, you know that this is kind of typical. The, the, the reason this we want this usually is that Q is not, uh, doesn't have a nice chain condition, but it has a lot of closure. And you want to be able to say that the small pieces of H are members of MG prime, so they can be used to build conditions in J of Q. Uh, so they, they actually exist in MG prime. Okay, the conclusion is that under these assumptions, without assuming anything about what the cardinal arithmetic is going to be, um, you get weak square uh, at the predecessor. So there, there is a special Ehrenstein kappa tree in any such forcing extension. Um, yeah. 
So, right, this is pretty, pretty much all I want to say. Um, the, in conclusion, I want to say the previous slide shows that, um, so my conjecture is it is possible to get a saturated ideal on omega-2 with the tree property at omega-2. The theorem shows that we need the continuum to be at least omega-3 for that to happen. Um, but we have no idea how to do it. So uh, I have some ideas, but uh, very uh, at the very early stages. So there, there, there would need to be very novel methods. Um, and thanks for your attention. Thank you, thank you. So, is there any question? Um, I, I have a question. Actually, I didn't really understand how the last theorem you mentioned um, provides a limitation for the for the previous result. Can you just say a few words about that again? Okay, so the point is that the only way we know to get saturated ideals or pre-saturated ideals on omega-2 with forcing and large cardinals is in some forcing situation like this, like in the hypothesis of the theorem. And the theorem says that you're always going to get weak square at the predecessor in such a setup. Ah, okay. Thanks. Welcome. So, uh, wait. Uh, this this th this theorem that we see now is mm -hmm. is it is it sort of like the the abstraction of the of the proof that we've just seen? It it's it's close to it. It's uh, it. I wouldn't say that the theor this theorem is a you know a generalization of the other theorem, but they kind of use similar arguments. Okay. I mean, there's different hypotheses. We're, we're saying that, so in the previous theorem, we're saying you have this generic elementary embedding that comes from uh, something that's just sending omega-2 to omega-3. Mm -hmm. In this, we have more particular assumptions about, and, 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 then, and we assume the continuum is the most omega-2. Here we drop the assumptions about what cardinal arithmetic is, but we say, assume the model is built in a certain way, then we have the same conclusion. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. My uh, okay. Mine is not really a question, but can you go back at the beginning? There is something I couldn't quite catch, and I thought you would explain it later, but you never did. Which is that? Uh, and at the beginning, um, when you were. Uh, even the very first slide. Yeah, the very first slide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because this is the motivation, right? Yeah. Uh, so you were saying that uh, omega three is not generically weakly compact. Well, what do you mean with generically weakly compact, and why does? So you mean just under MM, omega three is not generically weakly compact. Weakly compact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have a definition. I mean, there probably are some uh, papers with a definition, but I just like the the common wisdom is the tree property is like, you know, the essence of weak compactness that can be at small cardinals. Um, so generically, it's kind of maybe not really a important mm -hmm. word for that. It's just I wanted to have parallel language to the other things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So are there other questions? If not, well, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>